Tonight we begin a special two-part special report on human trafficking. Local 3's Molly Hollebeek explains that this is not just an issue that can affect a major metropolitan area. Michigan places in the top 10 of states with high amounts of human trafficking. And despite popular belief, it's found in all areas, even right here in the Upper Peninsula. What we want to believe, I think, is that, you know, it's the stranger in the white van who comes up to us and kidnaps us. Um, but it's really a, a grooming process. And only 3% of all victims of human trafficking have actually been forcefully kidnapped. The Caring House of Iron Mountain works with victims of sexual assault and domestic violence daily, and that includes victims of human trafficking. They say many of these cases start online. The world is a lot smaller now with the internet and social media, and these are the ways that um, traffickers find their victims. You know, they go on Facebook and um, other social media websites and apps that are being used. So a classic example of like a girl, girls that I worked with would be um, an adult man befriending them on like on the internet usually um, on Facebook or Snapchat or those other social media sites where you can easily just like find people and befriend them. Both Trudgen and Alquist said that traffickers target children between the ages of 9 and 12 years old, a vulnerable age to start the grooming process. These pimps make so much money off of just one victim that they have like the time and resources to to put into the grooming process. So for example, they could date a girl for six months or more um, before they finally introduce her to trafficking. Getting that trust of the victim and um, you know and that's where there's that coercion and fraud because you think you're getting into one thing and actually um, it's a complete nightmare. Some cases have also developed after a victim was job searching online. We're seeing that, you know, somebody will go on a website such as Backpage or Craigslist and they'll order, um, you know, this sex slavery and, you know, the victim may or may not be aware of what they're truly signing up for. Though she hasn't seen anyone prosecuted for trafficking in her two years at the Iron Mountain Police Department, Alquist says she's seen several cases that have the qualities of human trafficking. From what I've seen in Iron Mountain, there it it's happening here, um, and the the children are at risk. They're at a risk because these um, grown adults are targeting them. You can tune into Channel Three News at six o'clock tomorrow night for part two: How to spot the red flags of human trafficking. Reporting for Local Three News, I'm Molly Hollebeek.